changing climatic conditions will lead to a surge in the spread of vector-borne and infectious diseases across India, says scientists. This is particularly relevant when temperatures vary and moisture levels go up following events such as extreme rainfall. Concerns are mounting over the recent increase in respiratory viral infections including H2N3, adenoviruses and swine flu in many parts of India. Scientists say it might be too early to attribute it to climate change, but it is definitely plausible. The prospect of climate change leading to increased burden with the spread of diseases such as dengue, chikungunya and malaria looms large. Health experts attribute the situation on steady rise of temperatures that are affecting the pattern of transmission of disease agents like viruses. Ecologists added that changes in climate is resulting in the shift of habitat for species, thereby introducing new vectors to some areas or making some species more susceptible to new viruses that may have the potential to transmit to humans. Many health experts in India are now involved in a collaborative research effort, research to demonstrate links between changing climate conditions and patterns of vector borne diseases like dengue and malaria. The project aims to build a dashboard of climate health information service that may aid city level officials in decision making for timely and effective interventions with a focus on hotspots. Dr. Ankita Baya is an infectious diseases physician at the Manipal Hospital. She's joining us live from New Delhi. Doctor, welcome to the program. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. And uh, actually, it's, it's a very important topic that you have raised regarding climate change, that we are seeing new viruses and new infectious diseases coming up and infecting humans. Right. Help us understand how climate change is associated with the spread and surge of viruses. See, uh, Eric, what happens uh, when the climate is changing, the survival time of the virus on the surfaces where it can actually infect humans for a longer time, it's, it, it changes. Also, the species barriers, we, we, what we see, the new virus comes in picture because what happens, as you have mentioned rightly, that habitat uh, of, of the animals, like these uh, viruses switch from different species, cross the species barrier, and we see a new strain of a virus we start infecting humans, which was earlier not infecting humans at all. So if we understand this, we need to understand uh, the physiology, what, what is happening here. So uh, the virus which is infecting the animal earlier, it, this animal uh, change, uh, changes its habitat because of the change of uh, the climatic conditions. And uh, there are different other viruses which are circulating one which was a milder virus which was infecting humans earlier. So when both these viruses uh, uh, tend to occur in the animal itself, they some some have they exchange their genetic material and make a new virus which is compatible to cause infection in the humans. And this is what we are seeing. We are seeing the, the geographical location of the viruses are also changing. A good example is a recent monkeypox surge that we see, which was earlier like endemic in the African region, East and Central Africa. Now we had seen that this monkey pox virus got reported from uh, from different global uh, areas where, where, where it was no, uh, uh, not reported earlier. So this change is what we are seeing as we are seeing with the climatic condition change because of the human activities which needs to be addressed. Doctor, more research is being conducted and scientists are looking for effective interventions. But Doctor, which areas or regions in India could be considered hot, hot spots or even vulnerable? So, uh, majorly, uh, like regions where we see dense forest is there, like uh, uh, where uh, uh, different animals are residing, where uh, more flora and fauna are coming in uh, in contact, close contact with each other, like uh, near uh, uh, dense forest or near uh, the belts of rivers where we see different uh, type of uh, uh, animals they are uh, breeding and coming in close contact with humans so these are the uh, close area where we can have a research in our country also looking at different uh, aspects of species barrier cross of uh, these viruses which were not uh, earlier infecting humans right doctor finally when we talk about interventions, what should citizens or the government of India do to remain cautious and curb the spread of viruses? 
see eric it cannot be a single day effort it is going to be a collective effort first we need to take an action a uh, collective action by both the administration the government part and the uh, and the general pop, general people part common man part that they take care of the uh, environment overall uh, conditions and uh, they are taking care of the pollution uh, which actually in long run is uh, affecting global warming and the temperature and the climate change apart from this uh, we can have uh, dedicated research or we have a national institute of virology in pune where we are looking for different viruses any new viruses there we send there for any for the identification also so uh, this uh, it is going to be a collective effort from both uh, the common man and from the government side but yes we need to act now as we are seeing uh, different uh, viruses coming into picture uh, we had gone through covid 19 we had gone through monkey pox we had gone through influenza and we know all these viruses they come up with a new strain and then the immunity is not there and we see a bad uh, epidemic sort of picture affecting mankind all right i've been talking to dr ankita baidia she is an infectious diseases physician at the manipal hospital doctor thank you very much for talking to we on today thank you we On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.